start on this computer. Recording's in progress, so we're going to get started, everybody. First of all, thank you so much for being here. My name's Carol, and I am a Canva adequate user. I am not by any means an expert. This is something that I've taught myself how to do. Um, my dad, who's on, who's on, who's the only gentleman on the screen right now, he um, got us print shop when we were really little. And I loved, loved, loved making um, cards and banners and posters and all of that kind of stuff on our dot matrix printer back when it was only black and white and like computers only had a few colors. And now Canva is here. And that is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite tools to use. I started personally, um, I got a pro account pretty early on because my kids were home with me during the pandemic. And this was a really great tool for the kids designing and creating things. And then we found out that the um, Canva offers a free account to 5013Cs. And so since PTA is a 5013C, we now have a pro account through um, the, for, with Canva and we use it for all of the things, just all of the things. So what is Canva? Canva is an easy to use online tool that can help you design anything you could have possibly imagine. And the best part is that it is web-based. So for me personally, I use most of my designing on a laptop or on my computer, or like when it's connected to my screen so I could see it and it's really, really big. Um, but then if you're, let's say you're at school and you're like, oh man, what did the flyer say? You can pull it up on an app on your phone or on your tablet. Um, I know a lot of people use or design things on their tablet. I know I'm just a little bit more old school and I really like having my laptop there as my device. So types of Canva accounts. Everybody, anybody in the entire universe can sign up for a free account. And all you need with that is an email to log on to your account so all of your designs can be saved. The Canva Pro account per year is $120 per year. You, the, big, the reason why I'm telling you is because if you go on as a free user, some of the um, some of the pictures, some of the fonts, there, uh, some of the videos, there are things that will be blocked off and that you would have to pay for. So depending on what you're going to be using Canva for, I would start by the free. And then if you're like, okay, all of those, the, all of the things that I really, really want to use are going to be so, um, on the Pro account, then maybe it's worth it for me to do something like that. And um, so yeah, this is the symbol that you'll see with a little crown and it says pro. Um, and that will tell you which uh, if any of the elements are going to be um, free and or paid. So why are you here? Why am I here? What, right? Well, for all of you who are perfectionists, I welcome you. For all of you who are a little anxious about creating something because it is a brand new skill and maybe you're not the most computer savvy, I welcome you. And for all of you who are like me and are like, oh, new toy, new toy, let's go and explore all the things. And you jump in head first, welcome. Because I could tell you the best, best part about Canva is you can't break anything. You might design some ugly things, but you're not gonna break anything. And that gives you a lot of permission to go and explore new things. So. Today, you might feel a little out of your comfort zone, and I give you permission to go and try something, even if you're going to make mistakes. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to preach over the past couple of years in PTA is that we are all volunteers. Um, I created this slideshow in your PDF um, on my own time. I'm not getting paid by Canva to go and run this. We are all volunteers. And so um, could I have done better? I'm sure I could, but I think I gave a solid 80%, like, right? Um, yesterday, I was showing this to my husband and son, and my son caught at least 15 typos that are still in the PDF because I'm not going back and changing it. But that's okay. We're here to try something new. We're here to learn. We're here to see what else we can use this incredible tool for. So thank you so much for showing up and choosing to grow with us today. So the basics. First thing that you are going to encounter when you go to canva.com is what we're going to call the home screen because I really truly don't know what it's called. So that's what we're going to call it today. So that's where you're going to see your existing designs. Oh, here's another typo. Or you could select a new design to make. So if you're if you make um if you make your designs, you're going to see it show up kind of like um like a, on a grid and then the designs that were shared with you, you'll be able to find some things over on the side. And then eventually there's some, there, some people like me who are not very 
organized all the time, but are organized digitally, there are folders that you could make. So free accounts get two folders and then pro accounts get many, many more. So if you ever have the time and you're like, okay, I'm creating this for PTA, but then doing this for my kids and I'm doing this for work and I'm doing this for um, my place of worship and I'm doing this, like all of these different things and I'm creating all of them, you can make it into folders to find the things a little more easily. Um, then Canva also on the homepage offers things like learn to design. So if you're like, I don't know what colors look nice together. There's a whole video about color choice. And if you're like, okay, I know that there are things called font, but I don't quite understand them. And how do you put two of them together? They're going to have a, a course called font pairings, right? So there's a bunch of things that they will be able to teach you to help you become a better designer if you want to learn. If you don't want to learn, then you could just go get design inspiration, look around and be like, ooh, that one looks pretty. And you could click on it and you could start playing. So whichever way you want to go and explore Canva, the home screen is going to be there for you. So on the home screen, you would probably then pick the type of design that you want to do. So like I said, back in the day, it was banners and um, the, the cards that you would fold into fourths, right? We've moved a long way from print shop. So now they have specifically on here um, the, an, a, an, a category of Facebook, and you could make a Facebook regular post. You could make a Facebook reel. You could, or at whatever those movie things are. You could make a Facebook ad. There's all of these different things. If you type in Facebook, they will make it the exact size that you need to, to fit into Facebook perfectly. So like one of the things like a header, if you're for our PTA group that there's a header. And so you just type in Facebook headers or group headers or something like that. I don't even remember, but it's there. And so that you'd be able to go and get exactly the size that you need. So other things are um, that they have our Instagram or presentations, or if you've ever filled out a Google form through PTA and there's a pretty thing up on top, it's because Canva has something called Google headers and it fits perfectly into Google forms. Um, you could make info graphics and flyers and menus and business cards and videos and invitations and all of the things, this menu down here gets you started. So if you have an idea about the thing that you are trying to create, you would just go and be like, oh, I need to make a presentation today. You'd click on presentations or, okay, I need something for my Instagram account. And you'd click on social media and you'd be able to find it. Now, I'm going to tell you about the pro version because I think that if any of you are ever interested, you're like all of a sudden you're like, oh, this Canva thing's fun. Maybe I could volunteer with PTA and make things on Canva. Um, I wanted to tell you about our brand kit. So a brand kit is part of the pro version. And what that means is that anything that represents your brand with colors and fonts and approved imagery and all of the things are available right here. So what you would say in our, when you log into the PTA's Canva account, you will see these five colors that show up on the side every single time I'm working on something. So the blue and the yellow were pulled directly from Mill Creek's website as the Mill Creek blue and Mill Creek yellow. And you'll see these tiny little numbers underneath here. Those are called hex numbers. And those are like the digital name of the color. So instead of calling it dandelion yellow, it's um, hashtag F8CF40. So, um, so those are the colors that we typically use. So if you're, if you're like, oh yeah, that does look like Mill Creek. It's because I use those colors all the time. Time. Um, I also have uploaded Maximus, who is our mascot, and the PTA logo that we created two years ago. We don't necessarily use the same font all the time because we do so many fun things throughout the year that are themed. But if that's something that the board wants to do going forward to be like, I think that we should always try to make things look like this, you would be able to put the font choices in there as well. So we're starting something. And th this is, again, just a screenshot. Um, you know, So this one to me could be a couple of things. It could be an Instagram post because I see that it's square. Maybe it's a logo because I know that the logos come in the in the square ones as well. So you'll be, so you'll be taken to a blank canvas. We're going to call this part over here the canvas. And there are tons and tons of different options that you can get started with. And that's what we're going to go and explore right now. So the first thing that you're going to see on the menu, so if, if you're looking here on the picture, that's where it is on my screen, because you could see my entire Canvas screen, it's up here in design. 
So uh, they called it layouts. And I think that that's kind of old. On mine, it's design. Maybe in uh, in the free version, it's called layout. But I don't know. But it's the top one. And that one is where you can um, find a background and something pretty already made. Um, they're almost finished. And all you need to do is add your details. So like what I love to say about these things, about either the pre-made ones or things that I've made from last year or two years ago, and you just have to change the date, we say that the wheel has already been made. You just get to go and bedazzle it. So that's what we're going to work on first here. The layouts make it easy for you to get started designing because you don't have to really think anymore. If you just type in back to school flyer and it, all of a sudden it shows you 15 and you're like, oh, I like that one. I'm going to go change it to Mill Creek colors and add our dates and it's going to be perfect. So let's go and play with it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by searching. You could tell that I just did a search. Um, so I typed in here, I typed in sport because Maximus is looking pretty sporty. So what I know that we, we really loved our football team this year. And so I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say, add a new page because I don't want to ruin any of my stuff right now. But as you could see, I would then be like, oh, okay, that orange, eh, I don't really like orange. It's not really a Mill Creek color. I'm going to change it to blue. And then I'm going to say um, the Mill Creek Academy, right? And then we'll say um, football fun day. And then we'll say um, meet Maximus, right? Or whatever it is. And you could go through and change it around. And you all of a sudden have created a flyer that you really didn't have to think very hard for. And that to me, is the, the time-saving aspect of it is one of my favorites. The next thing that you will be able to do is check out the elements, um, the elements tool. So some again are free, some are pro. So if you're looking here in my picture, that's pro, 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 and this one is free. Um, you see here, I typed in blue and yellow retro because the, we do a lot with blue and yellow and retro has been something that has been popular this year. So there are graphics, there are photos, there are videos, there are shapes, lines, icons, charts, and more. And some of them are in a format called vector which means that you can adjust the colors. So we're, um, you, th that's something I'm going to show you in a second. And then you could also like what the same way that when you go on Google and you let like, you do your search, sometimes it's better if you are a little bit more detailed in your search. So you can say like blue instead of blue background, you could say blue watercolor background, or you could say blue glitter background or something like that. Um, you could just look for design things like farmhouse or boho, or, or you could do filters and say, I want things that are animated. So you see this little guy right here who's telling you, go click on elements. That's an element. And he's, I typed in arrow. And then I searched for animated arrows and it was show just do that one over and over and over again. So if the more um, detailed you are in your search, the better results you are going to find specifically for what you need. So let's play with elements. So the first thing that we are going to do, I did a... I did my little homework before to make sure I actually knew what I was doing today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in blob. And we're going to go over here in graphics. So you see, there's all of these different blobs. And as we're looking, this is a free blob. This is a pro blob. Do you right? You see how there's the di the different li little symbol on the bottom. So I'm going to try to pick one. Ooh, this one's pretty. Look at that. So here is a corner blob, right? But you're like, ooh, the yellow is almost the right Mill Creek yellow and that coral color, totally not Mill Creek. So that's when I would go up here to colors and look, here's my brand kit. And I get to click on the blue and I'm gonna change the yellow to be exactly yellow. And all of a sudden we look like Mill Creek just by changing those two colors. So that's how the brand kit goes in. And again, brand kits are going to be from the professional one, but I know that there are a couple people on this um, on the call tonight. Somebody really, really, really likes orange and you could save your favorite, favorite orange and you could make your things orange match orange. So the next thing that we're gonna look for is a horse. So let's go back to elements and I'm gonna type in horse. For this one, instead of being a graphic cartoon, I would like it to be a photo. So I'm gonna go over here and be like, oh, look, look at those really cool photos. So again, some of them have the background removed so you could just grab a horse and be like, oh yeah. Um, the reason why I picked horse is because we are the Mustangs. And so I was trying to come up with things that we actually would use. Like this would be a really funny one for some like, don't forget. 
haha, <laughs> right? So there's all of these different types of photos. Again, I just typed in horse, but you could type in brown horse, and then all of the horses are going to be brown. Or you could type in specifically horse Mustang, and then those will show up with horses that are been labeled as Mustang. So that's pretty cool. And then the last one is going to be videos. And the best part about these is that none of the children in these videos go to our school. So we're allowed to put their faces on Facebook. So I'm going to type in school bus and I'm going, and so here's the, here's the, the photos, but let's say I want to catch people's eye and have some like background thing going on. And we could have here, when you, when you click on them, you, could, you see how the stop sign just went out and it's flashing? That's going faster because it wants to give you, like it's like um, one of those, like the, the time-lapse videos, right? So here you could see kids going on a bus. Here they're going to be a bunch of kids running off a bus. So you click on it and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm totally liking this. You wouldn't be able to tell it wasn't Mill Creek except for the fact that we don't have fancy bus numbers like that. But you know what I mean? You're looking for something that you need and you could find the videos. So again, when I'm looking here, a lot of them are paid. Um, Most of them are paid, but... Again, you hopefully would be able to find something that you were looking for. So next thing. So you, we got them, right? So we got our we got our blob graphic, we got our horse photo, and we got our school bus video. But that's not all you can do with those with those elements. You can also edit your elements. So you could do things like filters and you could do you could add shadows underneath things. You can pixelate images, you can erase things, you could rotate and flip and there's so many more things to do. So I'm not going to do a lot with the edit photo or edit video options because I don't think that those are quite necessary today. Those are a little bit more in depth, but they do have like one of those like face smoother right? Um, the photo editing processes. And there's a lot of really cool things that you can do. Um, one of my favorite ones, if you guys, uh, um, for personal friends, you just saw that Kayla was asking for help to do her silver award. And all of a sudden Kayla's like doing like this thing, right? And her hands are up in the air. We used one of the video editing options from Canva to delete the background behind her so that she looked like she was spinning in glitter. So those are some of the options, but we're not going to do that today. Uh, today, we are going to play with the background remover. So those donuts look delicious, but let's take a look at this. When I'm clicking on this, I see that there's a thing called edit photo. So I'm gonna click on edit photo. And the first thing that pops up under in the Magic Studio is BG remover. That means background remover. You could see that the beach ball had the sky, but then they're gonna take away the sky. So I'm gonna click on that and poof all of a sudden, now it's just donuts. So let's say that you didn't like all of it. You can go in and manually do something. Like let's say you wanted to have donuts with stripes so you could see some colors behind it. I have no idea why you do it. Now it just looks like Wolverine. But the point is, is that you can go through and edit specifically if it didn't do the, it by itself. So now look at that. There are our donuts with those. And if I go over here, Maximus can play peekaboo through the donut. So that's a, a kind of a fun thing to be able to do. I do a lot with the background removers because you never know, especially with um like it, you could like take people and put them in different places. And that's a pretty fun thing to do. So the next one, whoa, that was not right. Let's try this again. So the next one we're going to do is the um, magic eraser. This week at Mill Creek is our teacher appreciation. And if you've seen any of the teacher appreciation um. I don't know, marketing, you will have known that Maximus was a pirate. And Maximus in those things also had a peg leg. And you're like, whoa, how did you do that, Carol? Because I've only ever seen one Maximus. And that's true. This is the only graphic that we have. He came with, um, he came as the uh, mock-up for when we were buy or purchasing Maximus. And so this is the only picture that we have. So we have to use it for all the things. Well, how do you make Maximus a pirate? I will show you. So if we go here again and we click on Maximus and we click on edit photo, instead of doing a background, because as you can see, there is no background, you can go on magic eraser. And then um, I'm going to zoom in on the bottom so we could get an up close and personal with Maximus and then take my brush and you can see how you can make an enormous brush or you can make a teeny tiny little brush. I'm gonna make a decent sized brush to right by his pants. But again, we are not looking per for perfection. I am. I don't use um, 
Photoshop for specifically this reason. I don't know how, but I can do the best I can to trace under his leg. So I would go like this with my mouse tracing under his leg, right? And I'm like, okay, cool. We got the hard part. And then it's going, it's going to think for a second and it's going to delete it. Takes in a little bit. And then what I'm going to do after it's done thinking, eventually, is I'm going to change the brush size to be much bigger so I can um, erase his shoe as good as possible. Now you see what you see what I mean? How there are these hints of brown? When we put the thing uh, out on a Facebook graphic, do you think that anybody's going to notice those little bits of brown? No, that's when you say, okay, enough is enough. Let's move on. So then I'm going to take my my eraser and I'm going to delete the rest of his shoe because that looks kind of weird that he's missing just his leg. So now, or, yeah, right, just like just the femur, I guess. I don't know. Um, then, come on, Canva. You can do it, Canva. There it goes. So now if I zoom back out, you will see that Maximus is legless. So then what did I do for that? Well, I went back into elements. I typed in peg leg. And I went into graphics and I found whichever one looks nicest. Uh, we're going to go with this one for today because it was there and it was easy. And then I would resize it and maybe give it a little bit of a rotate because his leg was going that way. And then now all of a sudden, Maximus has a peg. Right. So th that's a really fun thing. If you have something small and specific, you'd like to erase to give um, to add something else. So it's a very poor man's version of Photoshop. Another new one that I've seen is this one called Magic Photo. So you can see here, this is my Girl Scout troop. And the reason why I picked this picture was not because of them. I picked it because you see right here, there's a plant on the wall. And I'm like, what if the plant on the wall was the most important thing? I'm going to give you another real life example, but I couldn't find the picture when Are I Are you able to eat it? Sorry? Was there a question? No? Okay. So, um, so with this one, um, or a real life example, my sister and brother-in-law own a coffee shop here in St. Augustine, and we wanted to make stickers with the, with their name on it. And we found some really great latte art with the, with the cup, right? But the teeniest, tiniest little part of the cup was cut off in the picture. And we're like, but that we, a cup doesn't go, a cup doesn't have a straight line. We need to be able to expand it a little. So this is the tool that we use to create that. Again, we click on the picture that we want to use and we click on edit photo. This this one that says magic expand, you click on it and then you move it over just a little bit. Then you say magic expand and it's going to take a few seconds and whatever AI technology is going through and they're like, okay, what I'm seeing here is that there is a blank wall. So I bet that the blank wall goes on a little bit longer. And what I'm seeing here is that there's a plant and plants are usually a little bit symmetrical. So I'm going to try it. So look at that guys. We added a little bit of plant. Now, is that exactly what my plant looks like on the wall? No, but that's not the point. The point is that you can do it with those tiny little bits. And they gave a couple of different options just in case you liked one better than the other. Isn't that cool? Like just that tiny, and I know it seems so silly, but that tiny little cutoff sometimes could make or break what you're doing. So that was called Magic Expand. Now, the next one is Photo Filters. So we're going to edit this one. So again, we click on our sunflowers and we click on edit photo. What you could see here is they have a ton of different filters. We all know what filters are now. So you can make it more warm or you could make it more cool or you could make it rustic, not rustic because that's a Q at the end, right? So the, all of these different things, you want to make it black and white. It just gives you a little bit more or, ooh, look, we could outrun the sunflower or heat wave the sunflower. But again, there's all of these different things that you can play with to make your design the best that it could be. And then the last one, for anybody who's ever gone to our um, trivia nights, people, always want to know how in the world did I pixelate the photos? And I'm going to say Canva. So this is a picture of our principal. This is Dr. Goodwin. And it is during the Buddy-a-thon. And you could see he is reaching his hand into the, the box of golden tickets. And he is about to pick the golden ticket winner for the raffle that day. And so 
it's not necessarily the greatest picture, but when I was going through things, I'm like, yeah, we're going to throw Dr. Goodwin in here. So I would go here on edit photo. Now here comes some of the different effects. Like I was telling you about, you can blur, you could make him have like the different colors. There's all of these different fun things that you can do. There's the face retouching, right? Super cool things. But the one that I'm going to show you today is Pixelify. So one, the reason why we use this is one of our categories in trivia was we showed a picture, but it was pixelated. So whether it was a still of a Disney movie or a local place down in St. Augustine, like let's say it was the Bridge of Lions and it was an up close picture of, the, of one of the lions and it was pixelated. So what does that mean? It means that, that oh, come on, Dr. Goodwin. There we go. And now you can see it over here. There's Dr. Goodwin's head. There's his arm. There's the golden tickets. Now, if you want to make it so it's easier to see with smaller pixels, you can, or, and then it just gets more and more pixelated as it goes. Like there, now there's no more exit sign, but here there's a pixel for the exit sign, right? So it depends on what you're doing, but that's a really, really, really fun way to be like, guess what this is? Or like, if you have a, a picture of a bunch of students, but you don't know if you could actually put their pictures on Facebook because you aren't sure if they are allowed to or not, you could pixelate them and say, look at these students in the cafe following the rules, yay Mustangs. So um, that those are the reasons why you would use something like that. Next, now we're gonna talk about text. You could add a text box just like you could on any kind of like um, PowerPoint presentation. They're, they do have the different sizes. When you click on text, you could add a heading, a subheading, or the body. You could tell that those are different sizes. There are also some pre-made combinations. Um, I'm gonna show you the pre-made combinations because that's not on my next page. So over here on, on the menu, if you go on to heading, there's all of these different ones that have already been made. So you could be like, oh yeah, these are some really cool things that like I can, I can see how this newly added could be like, don't forget or something like that. And all you do is just change the words and you could use their pre-made art rather than having to design it yourself, which is pretty cool. Lots of really, really neat looking things. You have like neon and then you have like like the super calligraphy, there's so many different options. Um, so and again, with with regular text, if you, well, I'll show you that in a second. I said some of the fonts are free and some are paid. Um, and then let's go through some of the tools. So this is going to be the text menu. It's on here because I wanted to make sure you had it, but it's also here when I click on it, here's my text menu. So what we are going to do is we're going to go through and discuss all of them. So the font selection tool. So I'm going to highlight font selection and I'm going to go up here to my fonts. And here you can see a bunch of different types of fonts. Some don't have the, um, don't have the pro sign. And then I'm sure that if we keep on going, some do. So um, when, when, and the other thing is, let's say you're looking for something handwritten, you could go and click on theirs and all of the handwriting ones come up. So I'm just going to click on apricots because I don't care if I could read it right now or not. That's probably not, apricots is not a good font to have for all caps, um, but you could see how easy it was just like in Word, just like in PowerPoint to highlight and change your font. Obviously font size, you would highlight what you need and plus or minus to make it bigger or smaller. You would have a font color, which then you would click on the A with the text color underneath. And then these are all of the colors that have shown up in this presentation so far, but here are my brand kit colors. And here are the photo, like this, this color, they say this is what they see from Maximus. So here I'm gonna do Maximus Brown for that one. Now the font style, if you highlight this one and your font has it, you can bold, you can highlight it italic, you can italicize, you could un um, highlight underline, you could underline and you could highlight strike through and you can strike through. So the next one are your case settings. So today I chose, because for aesthetics, I wanted to do the auto capitalized, but that you can click on this one with this lowercase a and the uppercase a, and it'll change what you're, it's a lowercase and uppercase text. So if you want it to be all capitalized, you just, you could type it regular, click a button and it all becomes capitalized. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to make it look different with lowercase text. With font alignment, that's the one where you have this uh, left, middle, right, or justified. So for this one, I don't know if it's going to change my whole thing. Oh no, just that one. Perfect. So now I have centered it 
right? The dot points, I like that they changed it for I grew up with knowing them as bullet points, but they know them as dot points. So with those, we already have the dot point here. So you can see that this is already on here. Um, letter, oh, this is a big one. Letter spacing. Letter spacing is a really, really good one. And it's it's here next to the dot points. And you could do both things at once. Letter spacing is how you could put the space between your letters. So if you're designing a flyer and you want that big, like if you're going to write like eighth grade dance and you want dance to be really, really big, you could spread apart your letters for a maximum statement. And then some fonts look really good. Um, when they're close together, some you might want a little bit more space. So like back in the day, you know, like double space. I know that that's something that all of us who have ever written a paper in college know how to double space our essays, right? So you could make your lines get, you could line space really, really close, or you could make your lines farther apart. So the double would be here about two. So you could make it by yourself. That's double space down. So I'm going to just go back to where we were close enough anyway. Um, then font effects. Okay, so now this is the fun one. The for this is not necessarily the best. So I'm going to click on this one for the the uh, for the effects. So I'm going to go here for effects, and you could see here I could change it to have an outline. And I don't like that it's black because it's hard to see. But I'm going to change it to yellow. And now all of a sudden it has a yellow outline. Or maybe you wanted to do um splice. I know splice is one of my favorite ones, right? So you could have the two and. If it's a little bigger, you could see that it's separated a little bit. You could change it to be neon and it could glow, right? And then the, another fun one is the curved idea. So if you're ever trying to make a logo and you want it to go around, you could have the curve and then you could also play with the curve to make it so that you like, if you want the full circle, we got a full circle, right? You know what I mean? So that's a pretty cool thing. And that is a very ugly slide, but it was very informative. So look at all the things that we can do. We're just gonna leave that just the way it is. Next one is uploads. So we have, we take pictures all the time, or we have pictures like of things that we need to add that aren't available through Canva. So here is a picture of our upload or the upload screen. I could show you here in ours. There's the Girl Scouts because I use that. Guess what? Or I thought I was going to use a pirate ship and I didn't like it. But you could see all of these different things are picture, you could tell I was working on Canva, um, but we had like a picture of the front of the school or the eighth grade graduation signs, or um, when we were doing, I don't remember what, oh, for the um, someone special dance and it was a Disney theme and the, we wanted to make some Disney memes to advertise it, right? So those are all different types of things that, that Canva doesn't necessarily have. All you would do for that one is you would press upload on uh, upload here and you would be able to drag it from your computer. So here, I'll show you. This one is an idea that I saw that I'm thinking about using for the eighth grade dance. I have no idea if I'm actually gonna do it or not, didn't even know I was going to put this in the presentation, but you see how it just showed up here in my images. Now I can take that picture and put it into Canva. The thing I'm thinking about maybe is making a waterfall. I have no idea if I'm going to have enough bandwidth to do it, but I liked the idea and I saved it. But don't tell the eighth graders because I'm not promising that it's going to be there. So, um, but yes, you can add any kind of picture. The big thing is, is you can't, like, you can't open, if you're on, um, if you're using Google, what is this called? Google Chrome. You can't have one web, um, website open or a different page open and take a picture and drag it into Canva. You have to put it on your desktop first and then put it into Canva. It can't go directly from screen to screen. You have to download it first. So that's a good thing to know. Um, so another thing about uh, elements and text is that you can move them. Now, obviously, you've seen me move things around, and I bet that you figured out that the text can move from the middle to the top. But one of the things that some people forget about is, especially in presentations, is the idea of layering. And so I wanted to make sure that you understood that. So this is what the layer symbol looks like, and we're going to practice layering right now. So Let's pretend that this is what I wanted to do to um, advertise the eighth grade dance. The theme this year for the eighth grade graduation dance is Enchanted Forest. We're not going to really do this one, but I thought it was good. But you see here, I got this really cool picture of all the fireflies, but then I want the fairy to be on top. Oh no, what do we do? So what we do is we right click on the image and all of these different cho choices come up. I'm not going to explain all of them because that's too much today. The one I'm going to explain is layer. And right now you can see that it's 
in the front. So like if you think of it like um, almost like an Oreo, you have your bottom cookie, your center cream, and then the top of the Oreo. I don't want my background picture to be on the top of the Oreo. I want it to be on the bottom. So I'm going to do send to back. And now look what happens when I click. Oh, it did not work. Why not work? Come on. Oh, it did? Well, maybe this. Okay. So this is so, this is absolutely true how it works for me whenever I do something like this and, I, and it doesn't work. Well, <clears throat> if it didn't work that way, let's try it another way. So now I'm going to go and click on my little fairy and I'm going to click on, why is she not going? It worked before. Hmm. Well, we'll try again. So what I would do with that one is, now, well, it, well, at least this one is showing. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm clicking around and I could make this a lot bigger and then I could move this around to add to it. Um, if I don't like the colors, again, you could go and click on things and then, well, if she didn't work before, I'm going to make her work now. I'm going to type in fairy and oh, look, she's the very first one. Did you see how hard I worked on this? I'm going to click on her and add her right here. So I'll delete the other one. It didn't work. I'm just going to try it another way because like I said, you can't break it. It might not work exactly how you expected it to, but you can always figure out a way to get it done. And I think that if you come out with anything from today, that's the lesson. You might not get it right the first time, but if you keep on playing with it, you won't break it. You just might find a new way of figuring it out. Yeah, that's what we're going to tell ourselves. Um, the next things will be other design features. So just like in PowerPoint, you can animate your your designs. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, you can also choose the transparency. And the last thing is you can um, group elements together and the position tool. So let's talk about those. The first one is let's animate this page. So let's pretend you're in charge of bingo night next year and you want to animate and have something like, or maybe instead of join us for, maybe you're making something that says welcome to and it's going to be displaying on the big screen right when people walk in with the directions for what they should expect during bingo night. Well, I mean, that's cool, but wouldn't it be even cooler if it was bouncy, if the, if the, if the, if the words for bingo bounced? So what we could see here is we can go and click on all of the different things. And if this is bringing you back to the very first time you used PowerPoint and you did all of the transitions and all of the slides, you are absolutely correct, right? Like, And then if you click on the specific items, you can do individual ones. It doesn't have to be the entire page. But So if I click on here, now it could be, they, they could bounce in. If you click on a bunch of them together, they could do it at the same time. Ooh, look at that. Let's do that. Woo, isn't that fancy? So every time it would turn on, there would be an animation. So there's a lot of things to do. Again, if you saw, I was just playing with it. I had no idea what I was doing. I literally was just clicking until I was like, oh, that one looks nice. Um, you can choose when, you, um, if it, when you're doing a presentation, if the animation will go right when you click on the slide or when you leave the slide, or if it does both. So you get to, do, you get to make some decisions for that one. Then for this, Let's play with transparency. Maybe you're in charge of trunk or treat and you want to make a really cool thing for trunk or treat. Well, this the black looks cool, but when I put it on that one, it's a little too busy, but I really like the ghosts that say boo. Well, watch this. So I've layered. Do you guys see that how I did the layers, right? We have, So the ghost is on the bottom, the black is in the middle, and the trick or treat is on the top. When I go here and I'm clicked on the black, I'm going to go to this checkerboard icon, and that's a transparency. And what you do here is you just move it down, and the ghosts come out. So this is 0%. That's 100. But right there, it's a little less busy, but I could still see them. So transparency is really, really fun for a couple of different options. Um, and I'll show you, I'll show you another way of using transparency a little bit later. So we're back to bingo. Maximus's birthday bingo bash. Well, he wanted to get dressed up. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. But what happens if I made Maximus and I kept him in the lower left-hand corner and then I'm working on the rest of the flyer and I'm like, ooh, Maximus, I don't think you're in the lower left-hand. I think you should go in the lower right-hand. So instead of having to go and click on all of the things and making sure I didn't forget his bingo dauber or something like that, what you can do is you can group them together. So let's play dress up. 
Maximus gets his birthday hat. Maximus gets his bingo dauber. Ooh, this could be one of those layering things because again, we're, we're looking for 80%. It's not gonna be perfect in his hand, but if I go to layer and send to back, oh my gosh, it looks like he's holding it at least 80% real, right? But he's a cartoon anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then let's say he wants to go and eat some pizza. That looks a little big, so we're gonna put it down a little bit. Maximus is ready for his birthday party. So the only time I will ever have to go and highlight the entire thing to make sure I have it all. So you see how I clicked right now, Maximus is on. Ooh, the pizza is in. His little dauber is on and now I have his hat. All of his things are together. And then did you see it says group on top? Now they are one thing. And when I move it, it all goes together. Maximus is ready for his birthday. He will be two next April. Then what's the next thing that we could play with? Oh, this one, positioning elements. Sometimes when you have, you have to line things up and it looks like you're trying, right? You're like, okay, M, and if, should I put the C here? Oh, but I, that doesn't look like exactly perfect. And then you're looking at your, the little dotted lines or the solid lines and you're like, I don't no, it's too much. I don't want to think about it. So then what you do is you highlight the, the elements that you want to have straight and you click on position. And now I could put them all to the left. I could put them all in the center. I could put them all in the middle. So I want to go back though. For this one, what I would click on is I want it all to be on one straight line where the center of all of those letters are exactly right. I would type it or I would push on middle. And all of a sudden they're lined up perfectly. Hooray. So that's positioning elements. Um, it does have the layers here as well, but that's not, I usually right click, but it is a way that you'll be able to do it. So to position your elements. So yeah, that's pretty fun. And then again, so if you want it to be perfect and you never want to touch it again, because what happens if you go like this and you're like, oh no, it's out of line. We have to go and make sure all of them are high. No, not that one. We want to share, make sure all of them are highlighted and we click on or we click on the group. And now I could move it anywhere I want and they will all stay exactly the way they needed to stay. By the way, this picture, I'm going to go and ungroup. These pictures were one of those vector ones. So I was able to change it to be Milk Creek colors. I like that idea. Um, what's next? Grids and frames. So again, sometimes you want to look a little professional and the grids are definitely going to help you with that. Do you see how they're all like sky pictures? So those are the placeholders for your grids. So if you're trying to make something, and I know there are some people in the, who are here tonight who love to show collages of pictures of their family or maybe part of their business. And so this would be another really great tool that you would be able to use to put multiple pictures of your clients or your kids and it makes it look really, really special. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I'm going to add a new one. So I'm going to go here under elements and in elements, I'm going to look for, or I'm going to type in grid and I think that's what I did. No apps. Where did it come from? Grid? Oh, how did I do it? Usually I don't use grids. The graphics are here. Tables, grids, here they are. So I was just scrolling down. I'm like, I know that, again, did you see? I totally may, I didn't know what I was doing. And so I started guessing. Well, I know it's under elements, right? I, I, all of the pictures are under elements. Well, let's go and see what they have for me. So like the, the, all of these different things that you could see. And oh, there they are. There's the grids. So you could click on the grids and that's one. So that's kind of boring. But look at all of these different designs that look really, really special. So let's say that you liked this one because right, that looks pretty cool. Then what you would be able to do, I wrote a theme so I wouldn't have to be thinking, what do we want to do today? I'm gonna type in the word beach and I'm gonna go to photos. And I'm going to say, okay, yeah, I'd like to go there. Ooh, that ooh, that, that one doesn't look so good there. I it got it cut off the places that I really liked. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to move it up just so it's waving the 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 white stuff. And then, ooh, that one looks like a place that I'd like to go to, but we'll, we'll put that over here. Do you see how they're dragging directly into that background? And then we'll do one more. We'll go this way. So that's pretty neat. But do you see how there is that little bit of spacing between the pictures? If you want a little bit more, click on spacing, and now you have a bigger space between. And then let's say that you um, you really like, that, like to change the color. Maybe you don't want a white background. You want to change it to black. No, nope, wrong button. Sorry. Um, I thought I clicked on the background. Let's try again. 
oh, you know why? Because the grid took up the whole thing. Now I'm on the background. Well, figure that out later. So, but yes, you I know you can, but we're just not going to worry about that right now. But this one is going to be for grids. And then this one is frames. So again, I'm in, I'm here now. I wonder if frames show up. They do. That's where I thought they'd be in the first place. So I'm going to click on frames. And ooh, that's a cool looking one. And let's type and I'm going to take this one away and frames. You see all. Take a look at all of these. So if you want to put your logo on a, on a screen, you could do that. If you want to be retro and like do your princess photo in that one, you can. If you want to spell out MCA, right? C, A, and where's M, J, M, MCA. Let's do that one. And we'll move this to make it smaller because that also is a cool one. So let's say make this a little smaller. And again, I, you can see I'm just making it up as I go. This is not meant to be perfect. This is meant just to play. And sometimes playing before you actually have to make something is the best way to learn. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to elements. And I'm going to first type in um, princess. And there is this really cute picture. Let's see. Ooh, this girl getting her tiara. Look, doesn't that look so fancy? It cut off the rest of the image, but it focused exactly on the part that I really wanted. Or let's let's say accountant, because I just looked up and I saw my dad. And so that's, look, 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 dad, look how clean this desk is, dad. We're gonna pretend that your clients think that your desk is that clean, look at that. And it goes right there and you could be like, come to my office, it's a very, very clean desk. Then for MCA, let's think about things for school. We'll type in playground. And then, well, that would be cool if that was our playground, but that's not. But look, you have a playground there. And let's type in lunchroom and yeah, kids lunch. Cool. That goes in C. And then let's type in, um, st uh, no, I don't know, um, science. If I could spell in front of all of you, that would be cool. And look at that kid doing a classic volcano. And now all of a sudden it says MCA with the letters directly inside. Like it's so, so cool though. And so those are the examples of frames. Um, now we're gonna talk about lines and shapes. So sometimes you just wanna be able to like have a line that or like a line with a, an arrow that points at something. Sometimes you wanna add a star. Sometimes you wanna add a rectangle. Sometimes you wanna add a circle. So those basic shapes are here as well. And I want to show you a few of them. So if you go for lines, Lines should be here, oh, but they're not. So let's type in lines. Look, when I typed in line, it says quick add. Yeah, I wanna type, I wanna line. And then there's gonna be my line. And then they, you could go and move it up and down. And then if you add a couple of them, like you could make them connect with each other, right? And all of that there. So if you really wanted to draw MCA, you could. Um, your line color can be changed. Your line thickness can be changed. You could make rounded points on the end. So lots of different ways because lines sometimes, you need a, you need a good line. Then with this one, with shapes, you could just type in C for circle. It always shows up, right? There's a circle. And oh, look, it came up in a Mill Creek color. Isn't that fun? So again, never know when you need a circle. But this is a really cool one. Let's say that you were making an advertisement and there was one word in particular you really, really wanted. And for this case, it's going to be the word this. And so when I put the, when I put it on here, ooh, I need to change this. So the words need to be at the bottom, send to back. Then I'm gonna take my rectangle and I'm gonna put it on top. How did I make a rectangle? I typed an R, a rectangle popped up and I made it so it would fit exactly what I wanted and I wanted it to be yellow. Now I click on this and remember our, tra our transparency tool? Look, it is now a highlighter. Ta-da, we have highlighted a word digitally, no mess and no worrying about losing your caps. So next one. We have our, um, you could add audio. So um, there are audio clips. Some, some of them are music. Some of them are sound effects, depending on what you're doing. Um, I know that usually when I go, I have some that are my favorite. Get Up on That Horse is a really good one. We put the happy birthday jingle in Maximus's birthday bingo bash video. And then square sausage ice cream. I bet you would be like, oh, I don't understand. Why would you do that? Well, I would because it's cute. So if I added it here, and then I played it. Come on, show everybody that you could play. How about we go here? 
No, why is it? Of course, why would it work when I asked it to? Um, light? No? Well, it is cute and you could play with it. Well, no, because it's this one. But if you go back and watch Maximus's Bingo Birthday Bash, you'd be able to hear it from there. But do you see how it shows up purple? That way you could line it up to the bottom of your presentation and you'd be able to have the sound come up where you'd like it to come up. So, but I'm going to delete that for now. Sorry about that. If you need help with sound, email me or text me or get a hold of me on Facebook. And I promise I will work with you one on one to get sound into whatever project you are looking for. Um, so, we're not going to play with audio because that just didn't work very well, did it? So, we're getting really close. When you are doing a document that are like a bunch of Facebook posts, or here, I'll show you that there's all of these different things that, like, that tell you, I'm going to show you by opening up our headers for websites. The I have made this year for the website and the newsletter, we have made 57 different headers for the website and the newsletter. All of them are made by us. So sometimes you want them to be in the right order. So you see here, if I'm clicking on this very first one for the meet and greet day, could you, could you imagine how long ago that was? You have, you have these up and down arrows where you could move them. Now volunteers are first. Now meet and greet is first. You can hide things if you don't want to see them. You can duplicate this page. So let's say that you really, really liked it, but you wanted to use it again for um, curriculum chat, curriculum chat. Now you've made a second one and you could just change the date, right? So you could duplicate exactly the same thing. And then if you wanted to, let's say something popped up between these two things. So this was August, oh, well, that's already wrong. So let's do this. Now it's in order. So the um, the 13th, and let's say something was happening really big on the 15th and you wanted to add something there, just click on add page and you would be able to add whatever it is that you needed there. I think that was all that was on that one. Is there anything else? Oh, the page number tells you what page you're on. Let's see that. Yeah. So down here, down here, it says page four out of 58. This is the zoomy button, right? You could zoom in really close or you could zoom farther away. You could click on this one to see a grid of all of them. And you're like, where's that one from Chick-fil-A? Oh yeah, it's page 26 and you could go and find it. So that's also a really good one. So this is, this is, would be with any kind of like flyer or logo or anything that would have multiple pages. When you're doing a presentation or whether you're doing a, um, a, a presentation or a video, the same thing would be on the bottom because usually you want a little bit more continuity going horizontally rather than vertically, but it's the same thing. Here's page 33. And if you double, if you click, you see, that's hard to see here. There's like those three dots. If you click on it, all of those other things pop up. So that's how you'll be able to duplicate a page or hide a page or lock a page or whatever it is that you need to do. Or you could add your transition because this is a presentation and that's my 13 year old self wants all of the transitions. Um, so that was about a page view. We're getting real close guys. Now for downloading, because a lot of the time you would be like, okay, um, um, control or command P or control P, right? And you just want to print the thing. That's not how it works with Canva. If I was just to do the standard file print, right, it would just show this huge chunk of the screen, not my exact thing that I want. In order to print it, you would need to download it first. Or, But most of the time, I know when I'm using it, it's more for a digital thing. So that's when you would save it as a JPEG or some other kind of project. You could also share your design with other people. Um, and if you want to connect your Canva account to your social media account, you can, and it will um, it will post it directly from Canva. That that would seem like something that was too much for me. I like to just download it onto my desktop and have a little bit more control. But um, I like right my my limit has to be somewhere, and so that's what I don't know how to do myself. But I know that it's something that you can do. Then I'm going to show you in a second for how to choose which way to download. So let's spread. Maximus is like download. And you're like, but why? There is no download button. I don't see a download button. He's pointing to it. It's really called share. 
It's up here in the corner, always, no matter what you're going to do, this, let, this will be up here. You'll have the name of your file. You'll have who's working on it. If you wanted to use Canva's printing, like for, um, like instead of Vista Pro or instead of Sticker Mule or something like that, you can print with Canva. I've never used it, but here under share is how you're going to be able to get it from Canva to whatever type of, um, file you want. So like I said, you could share it with people. Um, you can share a link out where you could show it from the team or anybody with the link that again, I don't, if you want questions, if you have questions about those, let me know that gets a little bit, you know, just a little bit deeper. So what the thing we're going to focus on now is look, there it is. There's the download button. So when we click on download, there are multiple options. When you click on this one, they were like, oh, you want a PDF? You want to print this off? Yeah, sure. We'll make we'll we'll save it as a PDF. You could either do it as standard if you're sending it digitally with a lot of color, or you could do a PDF print, which means that they have condensed the file size to make it easier for printing. You could change it like for this one, because this is a presentation, you could send it to PowerPoint. So maybe you design your backgrounds and then you do your text in PowerPoint later. Now, because we have animations, you could save this as a video and it will say every five or it'll change slides right now. It says every 5.4 seconds and it would just automatically be like, OK, here's this slide 5.4 seconds. Here's this slide 5.4 seconds. If you added your music, it would put the music on with it. Um, you could save it as a JPEG, which would be best if you're going to like, let's say that you're making your kid's birthday invitation, but you want to send it out digitally on a text. You would save it as a JPEG and then be able to send it out through your your phone. Um, most of the time for PTA things, I save it as a PNG because a lot of my images are complex and I want people to be able to blow them up if necessary, really big. If any of you are, um, enjoy using the Cricut. And that is something that the PTA bought for Mill Creek this year. We have a Cricut that we are, we've made the boundary that we are only using um, paper and vinyl. We are not cutting anything else other than paper and vinyl, but let's pretend that it was Maximus, for Maximus's birthday. That's literally what I did was I made, I, I made a design on Canva, transferred it over to Cricut software, and I was able to use it as a cut file. Th that obviously is pro, but Again, like we, if you are using it through the PTA account, you would be able to do something like that. So depending on what you wanted to do. So let's say for this one, I wanted to save a couple of pictures to be like, this is one of the things you missed. And I'll go and put the picture of, how about this one? We'll do the picture of Maximus dressed up for his birthday. Let's do that. So I'm going to do PNG. Whoa, it says that I have to pick a size. Okay, well, I don't need it to be enormous, enormous. I'll go half. I don't really quite know what those mean, but I know there are a lot of technical people out there who want to know exactly how much your pixels are and all this stuff. And I don't know, but that's something that you can do. Now, when you select, go to select pages right now, all 43 of them are selected. I don't want all 43 of them. So I'm going to take that one off. Now I could just be like, Ooh, this is the page I'm on. Yep. That's the one I want to print, but no, I'm going to be obnoxious and scroll through and hopefully go and find him somewhere. There he is Maximus with his birthday. And I'm going to press done. And then I'm going, it's, then I'm going to press download and it's going to get, download it for me. And then, then it'll pop up eventually. And then you could move it to wherever you want it. So here it is. So if I wanted to, if I want to save this for me personally, the way I do it is I move it to my desktops out of, or desktop out of my folder. And now I can go and insert it on Facebook or whatever other thing. If I'm emailing admin or whatever it is, I now have that particular picture ready to go. So that's how you get it out. I used to call this button when I was teaching, um, I would call it the get out of my iPad button because of that I didn't know what else to really call it. Maybe it's called share, but that's like get out, right? Get it out of where you are. Um, then we're on the last page. So this um, in the PDF that was sent out, and I am going to make a copy of this whole thing, and I am going to go and make another PDF of this one if you wanted to have the bigger slides. All of these are um, all of these are curated resources of things that I looked at when I was trying to put this together to make sure that we had all of um, as, as many resources and as many of the options as possible to make sure that you got the best uh, best use of your time. Um, if you go on Etsy, you'll, you might see that invitations are pre-made and then you get to just go and type your thing in, but you need to have Canva in order to edit. Or um, then if, again, with that font pairing, you could use the, uh, check out this website to learn about how to font pair. 
Um, Canva had some suggestions for how to use Canva to um, market your business or whatever it is you're trying to market. If you wanted to design physical products and then I've heard that educators can get the pro account if they can prove that they're an educator. And I saw that there are school ones too. So I don't know, Jackie, if you're still on here, that might be something that you could look into. And so I'm from here going to just say thank you. Um, oh, it is a video, so I should be able to move it. Look at it go. Come on. Oh, it shakes. It's a little shake. Jazz hands, thank you. Um, to be able to say thank you for um, indulging me and letting me share something that I really, really, really love with all of you. And I hope that you have learned something and that you take away that you can't break it. I promise, I promise you can't break it. Go and jump in. And if you have any questions, there's always the PTA email, which is mcapta18 at gmail.com or find me on Facebook. And I will be more than happy to go. And like, if you're like, okay, I have this design. Could you take a look at it, please? I would be more than happy to share my information with you and yeah, get, and get you going. So I'm going to stop the recording. Well, unless, unless anybody has any questions, because that might be a good thing. Anybody have any questions? Tangela, I didn't see that you showed up. Thanks, Tangela, for coming. I'm happy that you're there. No, thank you for doing this. I was well, late, but I snuck in for the right? last well, I'm glad and we copy or the whole thing is recorded. So um no problem. So I am going to stop the recording. Okay, bye.